All right, folks, welcome to this week's tutorial. So we are doing our first ever Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer photo edit because Affinity Designer has some really cool techniques from Affinity Photo. Now it doesn't have all the functionality, but today's tutorial can be done either in AP or AD. So there's my layout in photo. If I go to my designer, make sure for my designer folks, you guys are in the pixel persona and you've got the same images downloaded from pexels.com and you've got all the similar tools that I'm going to be using today. So all of your tools are the same. I'm going to use all the similar brushes, right, in the pixel persona, but I'm going to be working in Affinity Photo. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that we're going to do, because I like to work non-destructively, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to duplicate my layer and I'm going to call this copy and I'm going to make this one disappear. All right, so my copy's good. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new solid. To do that, I'm gonna come down to my pixel layer and I put a pixel layer in and I'm gonna call this mood. Now the mood is going to set the tone for the rest of the picture. So this is going to be filled. You double click on the color. I'm gonna choose something in maybe a darkish orangish yellow somewhere in here and once I've got it I'm gonna close that I'm gonna grab my fill tool I'm gonna make sure my mood layer is selected and what the fill tool does is it will fill this entire thing with that orangey color just like that all right now that's not extremely pleasing so we're gonna take this down now and you see I can adjust this area the way that I want it now, I'm going to bring this up to about 30% or so. I think that that's pretty good. All right. Now, I want the background to be this yellowish color, but I don't want the face. So the first thing I'm going to show you, and all of the techniques we're going to use really, are going to be done with masks. Now, masking works on this principle. White reveals, black conceals. So you see how this mask is white, which means it's showing this entire layer. If we don't want to show the layer, we need to paint in black and conceal it. So I come over to my brush, I grab my black, and now I make sure I'm on my mask layer because that's the only way this works. And I'm going to turn my flow down. Usually when I do this, I want it around 40%. And now I'm going to paint in black on that layer. Now let's make sure we're on black there. Oh, that's why my opacity is down super low. Let's not do that. Hey, look at that. Now that works. All right. So I'm taking this tone out of my picture and I'm really working on this edge of her face. Okay, cool. Now what about this stuff, right? Let's go ahead and turn our flow down super low. And let's just feather this out just a little bit. Okay. And I'm taking the face out of it here. Okay. Cool. You see how I'm leaving this corner? That's going to be by design. Now, if I go a little far, if black conceals, white reveals, I can always bring this back by painting in white. That's the beauty of masks. All right, so I've got my yellow in the background and I've got my yellow here and I'm going to call that the mood layer. Cool. Now I'm going to show you something brand new. We've never covered this at Seven Season Studios. Come up to your adjustment layer and put in a selective color adjustment. Now what selective color does? It allows you to replace certain colors. So like the reds, you can change them in the cyan, magenta, yellow, or black. We're going to work in the neutral tones. So this is brand new, right? We haven't ever covered a tutorial on this. I want to crank up the yellows. Now you see what happens there? The reason that we've got it kind of deselected in the face is because it's done double down. And I'm really going to pull something right about in here. I really like that. So I got my magenta set at 17. And I've got my yellow set at 66, but you want to go until you're satisfied. Okay, once you're good, we're going to go ahead and hit okay. 
We're going to call this yellow. All right, perfect. So let's look at our stack. Yellow layer, mood layer, copy layer, background layer, and background layer is off. All right, now we want to add a little bit of magenta violet to this thing, right? So we're going to come back now. We're going to come into another adjustment layer. We're going to come to the selective color, and we're going to do it again. We choose the neutrals because that's what we're working with. And now we're going to crank up the violet. All right, I'm going to crank up the violet. And now that's really, really bold, right? We don't want to see all of that. So once we got the violet cranked up and it looks like garbage, the way that we pull this together with this selective color adjustment, we rename it violet. Okay. How come y'all tell me I can't spell? All right. Now we don't want to see this. So if black conceals and white reveals, we bring in a mask layer and now we're still seeing it, right? What is going on? So here you grab the flood fill tool you grab your black and you tap on it. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but in reality, what you did is you made that blast, that mask black. And so you concealed all of it. Now what you can do, you come over with your brush, you grab your white, and now we can begin to reveal it. So make sure you're on the mask, make sure your flow is up. And now, even as we go over top of this, you see kind of how this is going to work. We're beginning to reveal some of the violet. That's part of this trick. This is actually a great, great trick to do. And it makes it look absolutely stunning. So you can go as far as you want to. And part of the trick to this I keep my flow down low and then I go until I'm satisfied on this part. Okay, cool. I think that looks actually really good. And if you ever go over to where you don't want it, just paint it back on the black and then you can paint away the violet the same way you painted it in. All right, cool. So we got the violet masked. We've revealed some of the violet. That's actually looking really nice. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over to the copy. I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to move it to the top of the stack. Boom. Now it looks like all our hard work just disappeared. But how do we possibly hide some of this stuff? Go to your mask. Make sure you're on the mask layer. Grab your brush. Grab your black. And if white reveals... What does the black do to this layer? It conceals it. Now, I really like the greens here. So I'm going to take this all the way to the greens. And you see how I'm going over the greens? That's completely fine. And what I'm doing, I'm not erasing. I'm just making it so that Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo does not show this top layer. Now, I want the hard edge on the greens. And one of the things I really like to do with this is I like to use a hard brush. So we're going to grab our paintbrush, come over to brushes, and we're talking about basic brushes right there. And we're going to grab the white. And why do we grab white? Well, because if black conceals, what does white do? It reveals. And so everywhere I overpainted, you see how I'm using this brush that kind of matches the radius of these leaves? I'm making sure the hard edge is in the more geometric areas. I do not want to overshoot. Oh, and I just did. I do not want to overshoot and mar up the soft nature of her face. Okay, now there's only so far you can go with the brush of this size. And then you have to turn it down a little bit. You have to zoom in a little bit. And now you got to come back with your new brush. Okay. Now I'm not using my tablet. You could probably be a little bit more precise with a tablet. But I'll tell you, I cut my teeth with a mouse. You can easily do all of this with your mouse. Okay, 
Now we're going to brush this in just a little bit and realize I have this thing cranked up pretty far. If I was doing this for real, I would easily have my tablet out by now to do these sorts of intricate details. All right. And we're coming down this way. And this, folks, is the best way to get used to masking, is just bring in some layers and mask some stuff. It's not rocket science. All right, that looks good. That looks good. Let's go ahead and come down the side of the face here. Just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and see what we got. That actually is awesome. I love the hard edges in addition to the softness. Now let's add some darkness because this area right here is all jacked up and I don't like the way that the hair is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fix this. So we're gonna change this from copy. We're gonna call this foreground. That was the layer we just adopted. So let's do a quick layers check here. Foreground, violet layer, yellow layer, mood layer, copy. So we only got five layers on this thing and it's looking really good. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Now we're gonna add a new pixel layer and we're gonna come in underneath the foreground but above the violet, this is key. I'm gonna call this darken. Now, when you darken something here, we're gonna grab our brush, we're gonna come over to brushes we're going to come over to our spray paints. And even in Affinity Designer, you got the spray paints. I'm going to grab this type of spray. It doesn't really matter what it is. And now we got to grab a color. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab black. Now, you see how that is extremely heavy. Let's drop the opacity down to about 50%. Drop the flow to about 20%. And that way we can build it up here as we go. All right, and what I'm doing here, I'm actually putting in some really good textures into this area. Now, as I swap, I might then wanna come in with my brush, go back to my basic brush, and I might wanna do a really soft brush. Now I'm gonna turn this up, and I'm just gonna start moving that in just like that. There we go. And you see how I'm rimming it there just on the side. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do a makeshift vignette, let's say, right? Now, I've got my darken layer. I'm gonna come into here. I'm gonna put this above the foreground and I'm gonna call this vignette. Now, for those that are in Affinity Designer, there is no live vignette function. For those that are in Affinity Photo, if you go to live filter layer, we've got that covered, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in Affinity Designer because you aren't gonna have it. You grab your softest brush you can, you grab your brush, make sure your black is selected, crank that opacity down to almost nothing, crank that flow down to almost nothing, and make this brush super big. Now, you're gonna to come to the side of this thing here. And you see how now we begin to start painting and we get that nice vignette look. And if you control where it is, you can frame up your subject really nice. And I'm not trying to get as dark as I am over here. And you see that the vignette is on top of the foreground. And now if that darken layer is a little bit too crazy, bring it down just a little bit and get it going to right about there. I think that's a lot better. I'm happier with that. And then for your vignette layer, if you wanted to turn up the opacity, you absolutely could. And you can finish up wherever you want to in the corners. All right, cool. This thing is just about done. Now, the cool thing is, because you worked non-destructively, if you ever wanted to go back and change it now, Watch this, if I wanted to change, say, the yellow, double click on the layer, 
make sure you are in the neutrals and you see it's got your settings saved, you can adjust the levels of the yellow now that everything's in play until you're really kind of happy with it. So if you wanted to make some adjustments, you absolutely could. Maybe it's a little bit too violet for you when you got done. All right, same thing here. If you wanted to change the violet, double click, make sure you're in the neutrals. And then you can go through and change some of the violet to make it look exactly the way you want it. All right, cool. So this is totally non-destructive. If you wanted to change the mood and you wanted to make some of the other areas maybe a little less, you could come in and adjust the mask by coming up to your brush. Make sure your flow is cranked back up. Make sure your opacity is cranked back up. And you could either add more black or add more white, depending on what you wanted to do. You see how as I move this over, I could lighten some of this up. You see it's kind of making this move anyway. All right, so that's how to adjust it. Now the last thing that I want to show you, there's one more level that I think is absolutely a pro move. Come over to your adjustment layer, put in a levels adjustment. Now, where do you put this levels adjustment? Right underneath your mood and above your copy. Okay, now what an adjustment level does? It's going to adjust the darkness or the lightness of the entire image. So you can add a lot of contrast or you can reduce it quite a bit depending on what you wanted to do with your levels adjustment. You could adjust all the channels or you could adjust different channels. So if I wanted to only adjust a lot of the greens, I could only adjust a lot of the greens. So I think that I'm pretty good with this one. So the levels adjustment matters. And then let me go one step further here. Because you are in this copy, watch this. You can come up and with the copy selected, we can absolutely just dodge the eyes a little bit. Now, what do we do when we dodge? We're actually lightening, but we're not working in anything but this copy. That's why we brought the copy in. I turn my brush down. I turn my flow up. And now I can easily dodge the eyes and make them a little bit more standout-ish. All right, cool. So I think that that is good. Let's go ahead and go file, save, save as, and let's go ahead and save this as reference image. And we will attach this as a download to this lesson. All right, folks, I know this one ran a little long. This one took a little bit to do, but look at all the techniques that you used. You learned selective color. You learned about masks. You learned about levels. You learned about dodging and you put out something from a stock photo that is absolutely phenomenal. All right, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see live tutorials and more tutorials on drawing or painting or photo in Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo, subscribe to the channel. And on behalf of Seven Season Studios, thank you so much for spending your day with me. I'd like to see what you create. Go ahead and drop me a comment in the area below. Even put in a link to your Dropbox or your link so I can see what you did. All right, we'll see you in the next one.